Okay, good evening and welcome to uh, the first session of uh, systems and networks uh, class. And so the idea of we doing the scale up course is that we want to impact knowledge, we want to help prospective uh, people who want to uh, toe the line of networking and system administration, not only to um, train them in understanding the words and technologies of networking, but we want to um, bring practical uh, knowledge into the skill set of um, the participants. So um, what we are doing uh, is a free course. Um, today we want to talk about um, systems and then networks. Uh, this course will be done by myself, Daniel Kwame Akwa. I'm also the coordinator for the free IT skill up course. And then my boss, Ivan Sasari Tepe. What do you need? Well, what do you need? What you need? You, know, you need for this course. Um, you need basic computer skills and understanding of computer networks. And because we had issues with um, people choosing all the courses that we publish for the programs, all the five courses, it's difficult trying to separate those who have to do basic computer skills from those who are doing system and networking because. If you don't have basic computer skills, it'd be difficult going through this course. And so I wish that those who don't have, who didn't have requisite skills should go back and take the basic computer skills and then it becomes easier for them to join this course. Um, you have to read more because this is more hands-on. We don't want to um, put our uh, much attention on defining some of the things, but we want you to uh, read more. And then there's uh, for systems and um, network administration, there are market opportunities for uh, people who want to apply this field. And if you really want to work in this, you need certifications like CCNA or Comptia Network Plus. And the trainers, we are real industry experts. And we have had over 10 years of experience working in uh, network events, has even moved from networks to system administration, and he's doing uh, a lot of things in, in this area. And we're going to show you some real-time tools and techniques in, in use in industry. You need a laptop. If you have a, a high-end laptop, it is to your advantage. And then the only limitation for this course uh, is that we don't have to, we don't, have, we don't have the luxury of having to be around you to help you do your, 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 your lab. So in the in-person training, what we do is that we have two or three ass people assistants who actually assess the student with hands-on so that we, people are not left left behind. And that's the only problem that we, we will have with uh, the virtual, as well as um, the reliability of the internet for our, 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 our participants. But we hope that we can, um, we hope that we can go through this course and then um, have the best out of this. Now, which skills do you need? You need to be a critical thinker. I'm telling you, in network and uh, systems, you need critical thinking. You have to be a very good critical thinker because there are certain times that when you are working in the field, and things don't seem to go the way you want it to go, you seriously have to deep dig, deep dig deeper. And then you have to get something and solve the problem. You need to work under pressure and for longer hours. Because imagine you are, imagine you are you are you are you are the one administering, let's say, the network of uh, which industry should I even use? Let's say airports, you are the one managing their network and Every flight, everything they do depends on the network, and then this network is down. You know the number, the delays in the delay and the traffic for our air flight. So imagine that thing happens and you have to work and you're not finding solution. It means that there will be a lot of pressure from the board chairman, from the CEO, from your direct immediate boss, from there will be a serious pressure, and you need to work under this pressure. And sometimes for very long hours. Like when you are working and you have to close at five and you are called at uh, 5.15 is a problem which you need to solve because other people have to use the internet. You need to be there to, 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 to work around the clock to give them services. And be very patient. Very, very patient. You don't need to be, be very patient. There are some times when you do configurations, it's giving you issues. You have to go take your time and go through one after the other, check the config and make sure you find where the problem is. We so have to be very patient. You must understand routing and switching. You must understand IP address and subnetting. You must know the Windows system because you're working with hardware and software. You must know the alignment environment. You must understand basic network security because when you don't have a security guy in your 
company, then security of the network falls under you. And the advice I give to you, to my learners, is that please learn, 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 and practice, 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 learn. Because in this technology age, technology keeps evolving. So you need to learn. You need to be at the top of issues. You need to practice, have simulation software, simulate, practice, 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 and let be on your fingertips, practice. So cost overview. In the session one, we are going to talk about network and system administration. And please, though we are going to look at the introduction, I don't want you to put, I don't want you to so much focus on trying to understand, trying to um, cram what you are seeing, trying to read and keep it. No, you need just to understand, understand how things go in system administration. And we are going to install advanced scanner. We're going to look at how we scan our network. Then in session two, we are going to work with Cisco devices. We are going to pick one particular router, we're going to pick one particular switch, and we are going to give you um, a configuration for a switch so that in any industry that you go, the kind of things you see them configure on the switch, you will see them as we start configuring from the top, from the beginning, we'll try to make you understand every particular line. So at the end of this session two, you should be able to configure a switch, you should be able to configure a router. And what makes this lovely is that it will give you a template that in any day, any time when you are called to configure something, you can only look at the template and configure because most of the network of industries have similar configuration. And all you need to do is to understand how the configurations are laid out in the templates. Now, in session three, we are doing directory services and you're going to install Active Directory. You're going to learn how to manage and administer users and computers for the network. And in session four, we are looking at network monitoring. We want to monitor the availability of our network. We want to see that our systems are working, services are working. We are going to install CACT, configure, install Nagios, configure. And then we are going to finish with a basic scan with Nmap. Now, what we are doing with Nmap is that we want to test vulnerabilities in our network and that's before anybody attacks our network. So we are going to do all this. I think I've mentioned all this. We are going to install a VM, VMware, CPT, Cisco Packet Tracer. We are going to configure a router and a switch and we will build a small network for each of us, I spoke about net modules, about and as we go along the training, we're looking at network troubleshooting techniques. So from here, I will drop my screen and then my colleague will share his screen and then we can continue from there. My name is Ivan Hashari. I'll be part of the team, well, I'm part of the team who is on the Facebook this program. We will take you to network system and uh, administration and you get to understand how the industry works, or what we do in our various offices when we say we are working as a system administrator, you are an admin or network administrator. All right, so is there anything you want to ask? You have any questions? Right, so I will check you through the introduction, and um, other colleagues will pick it up from there. So basically, like you said, system admin or system admin or network admin is responsible for the infrastructure and services of a company. So if you work as sysadmin or network admin, your main job is to make sure that these following stuff or details are well managed, properly taken care of, well documented, so that in future, if you are not available and anybody who comes and finds himself there, he or she should be able to go through your documentation and should be able to tell well a switch A or switch B is. So the infrastructure and the services engages somebody who manages the servers and the computers, network routers and switches, voice over IP, video, user account, and villages. So you create all of these things. These things, like we say, once you are able to install the Windows server on your machine or Ubuntu server, wherever we want to be, um, you should be able to create all of these things and manage account the computers and this thing properly. And then um, services like fast storage, all this will be done. We are all we install of them on our web server and um, our Windows server or the Windows server, depending on whichever one uh, we choose. So basically we will go through uh, the few uh, uh, operating system that I've mentioned earlier on the Ubuntu and Windows. Monitoring of devices and servers. So with this person, you make sure that your servers 
and your services and your devices are always online. Um, we always make sure that we try to do our best to, to prevent people from getting to us. So that is why it's very, very important to monitor your devices and to know who is in your device or who is not in your device, who has the authorization to get into your device or not. Procurement means to maintain maintenance and troubleshooting. So we don't just go to the market and buy anything at all. You, if, if you are the sit at me, you must sit down. Um, go through your net or go through by snooping the internet and knowing the current services that are available and the specifications that are available for you to recommend to your procurement officer. Because the procurement officer basically has no knowledge in some of these things. And once you are the sister, the, the demand is on you to give them the correct specifications, the, the proper specifications for them to buy you whatever that you need to make your system. Function well. Now, earlier on, I also made mention about documentation, which is very, very, very important. In my work of IT that I've done for the past 13 years, documentation has been one of the things because you see, there are a lot of things that you'll be doing. And again, there are a lot of things that come to your desk. There are a lot of things that go out of your desk. And so, if you don't document them properly, to know where A is and B is. I sit here, I see over over 150 plus pieces or devices for my network. Now, if I have not done proper documentation or naming of those pieces, to be able to identify them on the network, that's also another 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 loophole. And if you are able to do proper documentation, reporting becomes very easy for you. So do you have any questions here? No, please. Yeah. Yeah, comfort. Uh, please, we can't hear you loud. Can you hear me now? Uh, it's quiet. Please, uh, are you Hello? okay now? Uh -huh. Can you hear me now? Yes, please. Okay, so what is the network? Any, any idea? Come again. What, what, can you, what can you tell me about network? Is that network? what can I tell you about network? Do you have any idea? Ah, uh, can I say network simple means Wi-Fi? <laughs> Wi-Fi or data that is being used. Okay. To okay. for browsing. Uh, uh, okay. Wi-Fi or data that is being used for browsing. Okay, that's not bad. That is it. Yes. Hey. So what do you understand by computer network or network? We have, I mean, any idea, you know, over here, nobody's right, nobody's wrong. Okay, we are all sharing ideas. So don't feel bad, don't feel, don't say that what you are coming to say is wrong. No, 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 just speak out. We, we are all learning, okay? We are all learning. So yeah. what do you understand by network? Oh, I don't think it's, it's, it's like a collection. What is there for me? I'm sure you can see my screen. Can you see your screen? Yeah, I can see your screen. I still don't read what is there for me. I do read what the, what is there for you. Don't read what is there for me. Don't read that one for me. Ah, oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> oh, okay, I get you. Uh, and that's like, it's like an interconnection between like some of the ways called that. Uh, the connection between two or more computer devices like, to aid in like like um, transfer of information like selling and receiving information. Okay. So basically that's about that. It, 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 it's it's defined as rules or protocols which help in sending and receiving data via the links between links which allows devices to share Information or community, so they share resources together. Asian network, or how do you design it? So when you are able to put two or three things together, it becomes an, an a network. That we sit here right now, you, me, and other colleagues who have joined from other side. It's a network. You understand that? It's a connection between us. Okay, we are networking. So people also say that when you go out there, 
for a program for meeting that we are going to do, we are going to network to get you to know somebody, get the information from the person, the person also get another information from you, bringing all them together, managing them, and giving them into a proper perspective design become a network. Uh, All right. Um, network advantage. Okay. So, like I mentioned earlier on, I made mention of some of the networking topologies that we have the layout and arrangement of different devices on the network. Uh, when it comes to the practical aspect of it, where my other friends is teaching me to do the routing and other it's very, very interesting. We enjoy it. We enjoy those things. Okay, so we have the point to frame, we have the ring, we have the three, we have the hybrid, we have the best and the busy chain, and the star, like I mentioned. So these are some of the few interesting that we have. Great. So we have the 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 local area network a network where a group of computers connect to each other in a small area such as a building, office, um everything. So because it is small, the the, the data transport or data transfer is, is very high and very fast. So in terms of security wise it's also 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 hard because we don't have so many computers on board. Okay. And then you have the two types we don't have the wired and the one and the wire. Come for it. Hey. Hey. We have anything to say. We know what cat five cable. Yes. Uh, but it's used for what um connection of wireless. No, 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 no. Uh, comfort. Uh, comfort, you like wireless. wireless. Oh. <laughs> wireless you know, like... Comfort, you like wireless. We are saying wired. A cable that is wired, and you are saying wireless. Ah, uh, hey. So if you have ever used a computer in the internet cafe or uh, on campus or anywhere, the cable you connect from your machine to the wall, um, that is the cat, cat, uh, either cat five, cat six cable. Uh, so the okay, cable okay. you connect from your, your computer to the wall, to the uh, wall socket, that cable is called a cat five cable. Um, it you seems there is something at the edge. Yes, there's something, we call it RJ45. Ah, okay. It's like the telephone. I've seen. Uh, like that. So, I've seen. so those who come for the in person, we are going to show them those cables. But so we'll, we'll try and do some video, and then maybe we'll play on on the platform that so you get to see some of the video uh, the cables that we have. So please, uh, the type of uh, okay. like I've been saying, the course we want we want you guys to appreciate the course like practically. So some of these things, if we don't say them, you may not appreciate the practical aspect. That's why we are putting it up here so that you can go and then you read. So let, let, let me call yeah. uh, my colleague uh, is doing something now. So the personal area network, you're looking at you connecting your computer to uh, probably your mouse, wireless mouse, you're connecting to a green and hotspot, connecting to a mobile phone or a headset. This is just your personal devices. You're doing a personal device. And then for the metropolitan area network, uh, it covers a very large geographical area. So you're looking at the ATM. So let's say Ghana Commercial Bank. That's ATMs in Medina, Legon, Ashaman, Vota region, probably the northern region. And all these ATMs are connected via a network. So this is a metropolitan where it covers the entire area of Ghana. Then we have the wild area, wild, wide area network. Network that extends over a large group. So we are looking at states, countries, and the internet is one of the biggest ones in the world. So on a network, when you're on a network, there are some, there's something we call unique identifiers. There are things that you need to know about the computer systems on your network. So number one, host name. The host name is the name of the device on the network. Once you are a system administrator, you, you will be monitoring your network. You need to know uh, whether this device that are on the network belongs to you or belongs to people who are not on your network. So if you have servers, you have uh, router switches, you want to name them so that at least anytime you are scanning the network and you don't find those, those devices, you know that they are what? They are not working. And so you need a name for every device that you are managing. 
So on your computer, your computer name is what we call your host name. So your host name is what the name that is identified on the network. That is the host name. Okay. Okay. Then the IP address is what helps you to be able to get onto the internet and then browse. So it's a logical address that the, in, the network gives to your machine. You know, computer, the uh, computer speaks in ones and zeros. So um, it gives your, your computer a number. We'll come to that. We'll talk about the, the number very soon. It gives you a number, and that number identifies your system on the network. So on the uh, fiscal side, we are looking at your host name. Now on the layer three side, we'll talk about layer three right now, so don't be confused. Um, IP address is what, what, uh, is what identifies on the layer three network. Then the media address identifies on the layer two side. So we'll talk about this thing very soon, maybe the next slide. Then we have port. Now port is a logical channel through which data can be transferred. So when you are you are browsing, when you are going outside of, uh, you are going onto the internet, immediately you go to Google, google.com, a port on your machine is opened. So when you are going to google.com, you are connecting to Google on port 80 because it is a web 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 interface. So it's HTTP. It's either you are con connecting on port 80. We'll talk about this in details. Port 80 or port 443. Now it opens a port that you can be able to what um, communicate from your computer to the internet. So that at least anything that you are requesting on the internet, when it's coming back to your machine, it knows where to find you. So when you're going outside, you use ports to determine where your information is going and where it's coming to. So once port 80 is open on your machine and you go to Google, it means that when Google is coming back to you, it has to come back through the same channel, the same port. So the port, the MAC address, the IP address, and the host name identifies you on the network. So I'm going to um, stop sharing and then open a command prompt right now, and then we, we will see what we uh, will look at those identifiers right now, okay? So let me share my command prompt. This is my command, okay, this is it. Can you see the black screen? Yes. Can you see the black screen? Good. So let's say I'm on, on, I'm on my computer. I want to check my host name. I only type host name. I say host name, enter, and you see it gives you the name of your computer. So on the network, this is how everybody will identify you on the network. So if I do a scan, if you also do a scan on the same network, you have to see my computer with this name. It doesn't change unless I change my computer name. Now, if I want to look at my MAC address and the IP address I have, there's, um, there's a command we, 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 we type. So the command is IP config, IP configuration, IP config, IP configuration. So we can do IP configuration and we want to see all, all the documentation or the configurations. So IP config slash all. IP configuration slash all. Uh, when you go to Linux, so when we install the Linux, the Ubuntu, and we are looking at Ubuntu, Ubuntu is if config, this Ubuntu. But that's, this will not work here because this is Windows. If config is on Ubuntu because Ubuntu, Linux, they don't, the IP, they refer it to as what? Sub interface, so that's IF. But on the Windows, we'll do IP config slash all, and then we'll check the device. So you can see a lot of things happening here. So every interface that connects to, to the network has a configuration. So we have the ethernet adapter, where if you slot in a cable to connect to the internet, that's the ethernet adapter. Then when you go down there, you can see wireless. Can you see? wireless so we have wireless adapter one two and then okay this is the ethernet this is a wireless ad adapter one and then this is two i should be getting three because i have another wireless adapter somewhere okay so this wireless lan adapter wi-fi so for someone like me who have connected via the uh, wireless like Comfort wants to do, he, she will always wants to connect via wireless. So on the wireless interface, these are details, details of um, the wireless interface. So you can see, please, mm -hmm. um, what I've highlighted is IP version four address. That is the IP address we're talking about. So on this machine, 
my IP is 172.16.168.126. So it means that on the network, this is how I am identified on the network. That's my IP. This is what helps me to be able to connect to the um, internet. Now on the same on the same wireless adapter, we are looking at physical address. This is a MAC address, physical address. So we can see some B8, 86, 87, ED, E6, D4. So this is the MAC address of mine, the, uh, the connecting interface, which is the wireless adapter. Now, when you look at this address, I'm sure when you read, you understand more of these things. When you look at this address, this address contains the serial codes of what? The companies that were manufactures them. So there are some portions of this code that tells whether it's HP, whether it is uh, from Broadcom, whether it is from Dell, it tells you which company. So these things, they are hard coded onto the interface. So once you connect and you scan, you're able to tell where this interface is coming from. Okay. Then I will do another, another um, command which would tell us about the port like we're talking about. So the command is net start. Network statistics. So net start, short form. Now do all. Is I are you are you looking at what I'm I'm doing? Hello. Yes. Okay, yes. good. So net start dash A. We are looking at the statistics. The kind of connection is going on on the computer. So I say enter. And then you see there are some, so there, are some uh, there are some connections going on. So the first one is protocol. We'll talk about it, TCP. Then the local address. We are looking at 0 .0 .0. We'll talk about all these things. So where I want you to understand is where you see the colon 135. So the it shows that port 135 has been opened and it's listening to what? Connection. That's the state. It is listening to what? A connection. Now, 0, .0, 0 is the is the is the local IP of the of the of the device or the same as 1277.0.0.1. This is a local IP. So on this on this connection, we have port 5354 opened. And it's still listening. So when you are doing any connection, any connection that goes on on your computer, these ports are open so that when the when you ask for a, a information, it's coming back to you. It comes back to this port, and then security wise, these are the same port that hackers will attack because once they are opened, they will try and scan the network through that open port, find out the services running on those ports, and if you have vulnerabilities on the services, they are able to what, target and get into your your computer, then that's why looking at your ports and checking the statistics is very important. So you look at this one, it means that on my local machine, I am going out through 534, and then when the information is coming, foreign address, so it will come through this port, 49,669, and it's telling me that there, we have an established connection. So on this statistics, this line shows that I am really connecting to something and I, I have the connection established. So it means that currently something is happening. Maybe I have a browser opening or I have something that is connecting to what somebody outside of my computer. So those commands will, 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 will help you, will help you um, navigate through some of the small troubleshooting in, in what in industry. So I'll close this and I'll go back to, I'll go back to the slides. So the OSI model, the OSI model. Now, this is a conceptual framework that describes the seven layers that computer systems use. So we don't want you to worry your head on, just understand that there's a framework we use for networking and it's called OS, OSI model. It's a model that helps everybody around the world to be able to connect to the internet and have uh, information move from one computer to the other. If you don't follow this framework, it means that you are not going to use the what, internet or use um, networking interfaces. Now, this OSI model will help operators visualize what is going on, 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 on your network. So if you know there are seven layers, you're able to tell what problems you have on each layer and how to what, solve the problems. If you don't know the layers, it means that you have no idea what is going on on your network. So there are seven layers. 
and uh, we have from layer one to layer seven. Now on layer seven, this is where you are interacting with what the computer. So your browser, your browser, you are doing, you are browsing, you are doing Skype, you are doing. Um, currently we are on Zoom, so we are on layer seven. We are connecting via Zoom. We are on layer seven. Now when you come to layer six, presentation layer, like the name suggests, present. It presents information. So in this layer, every information going on to your network. When it gets to this layer, it tries to what, present the information to what. The application layer where we can interact with the word computer. Now the session layer, it maintains connections. So when you look at your browser, there sometimes you get cookies. You get cookies. So when you say okay, accept cookies, that what the cookies will do is that they maintain the connections for you. That's so that's layer five. So on your browser, you go to a, a, a website and they tell you oh accept cookies. What you do is that they want to tell you that anytime you come to this this. Uh, this website again, you don't need to um, do reconnection because once you have the cookies accepted, it will always have a session for you, unless maybe you shut down the computer and and maybe uh, restart your computer and then come back to the browser and then reestablish the connection. But once you are on the browser and you go back to that tablet, that that tab, and then go into the website, the the connection is already established. So you just continue doing whatever you want to do, and that's how come when you're on your browser and you move to a different browser and you work, you come back, you still have your session in place. Now on the transport layer, like we're talking about TCP and UDP. So transport layer means that you, are, you want to um, transmit data. So you transmit data to the transport layer. So most of the things transport goes on to this layer. So we talk about the port. So the two, the two protocols that are used in transport layer is TCP, transmission control protocol, and then UDP, user data gram protocol so tcp you need to connect udp you don't need any connection so tcp tcp is very reliable udp is not reliable tcp if you do if you send an information you need to get a response before you can continue the session but udp doesn't care who is listening it will just send you the information it doesn't care who gets it now, the network layer is what we are going to discuss more in session two. We are going to discuss more of that in uh, our, our second session, network layer, where, when we are talking about the Cisco devices. So this is what? The physical part. So when we see, like, comfort is saying wireless, wireless, there are things that happen on the physical level before we can get you wireless to connect to. So on the physical layer, we are looking at, when Daniel says that I want to go to Legon campus, where do I pass? That's what, what the network layer will tell you. So network layer will tell you the routes that you use to get to a, a destination. So if I say gmail.com, it is the routing table or the router in the, uh, the network layer that will tell you move from this network on Legon campus, go to the airport, get to UP, uh, U, USA, get to Norway before you come back to, you come back to what? Uh, Gmail. Then when Gmail is coming back, it use the same route and comes back to your browser. Now, data link layer uh, is the layer is what we call layer two, and that is um, we, we 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 call it switching. So it's a switch network, Ethernet. So if you have seen a switch before, if you connect a cable to a switch, you're on layer two. If you connect uh, four or more devices, computers onto a switch, you're on layer two. No routing is done. So on layer two, you can develop a network which you can't go outside and to the internet, but you can still communicate within your environment. That's layer two. So when you're in the office, we have a, we have a network layer, or sorry, uh, a layer where we can talk to each other on our, our, our internet, but we cannot go to the internet. Then the physical layer is what? The things that we see physically. So the cables, um, the the computers themselves, the transceivers that we use for um, receiving and sending information. So layer one, like I, I have already uh, spoken about, so the equipment we have SFP, we have network cables, we have fiber cables, we have repeaters, we have media converters. So media converters, if you have a cable and want to uh, convert to fiber, fiber transmission, that's what we call media converters. Or you want to convert from copper to radio, 
Sometimes you see the wireless, they put radio above. It's not the radio that is giving you the wireless. Radio. The wireless comes through a signal through the cable to that receiver, and the receiver will, will, will change it into what wireless where you can connect. So always when you're connected to wireless, remember that there is what a physical layer beneath the wireless you are connecting to. If the physical layer connection is not there, it means that you cannot connect to the wireless. So always there's a cable that goes to the wireless device and goes down to switches through routers towards the internet. That's how can you're able to browse through your wireless. Layer two, where is layer one devices? So maybe now you can see cat five, the cable. Please can, can you see it? The blue. Hello? Yes. That's cat five. Yes. Good. So, uh, okay. So on the right side, what you see on the right side is all the interface card. So what you connect your cable to on your computer. What you connect your cable to on the computer. That is the network interface card. Then on the left side, there's hub. The hub looks like a switch. Then when you go down on the uh, on the bottom left, you see the wireless access, like the one I was talking about, the one that will give you wireless. So you connect a cable to this, and then this thing can give you wireless speed. Then we have the fiber fiber optic what cable or wire, which helps us transmit data through what transmission of light. So these are what layer one devices. Now on the on, on the layer two, which is the data link layer, we are looking at the Ethernet. This is the foundation of um, uh, network. Ethernet is the foundation. So you have a switch here, and every connection on the switch is on layer two. So switches connect individual computers on the layer two, on layer two. On layer two, the address that you use is what media address, the MAC addresses. They use the MAC addresses to what? Communicate. That's on the layer two. They use the MAC address to communicate on layer two. It's on layer three that they use IP addresses. So without layer three, we can still have a network. So sometimes in production, you see that the ISP, ISP uh, probably have a fiber card and it's not working, but your network should be working. And that's how you design your network. Your local network, which is a layer two, should always be, be working so that when internet is not working, at least some of your resources that are local to you, some of the servers that you use locally can still work. But if you put all your servers on the internet and there, there's a problem with the internet, it means that locally you cannot, you cannot access your, your, your servers. So that's another, uh, another, another trick that we do here. So we put local service in-house and we put, uh, we put our um, public service outside so that in case we have a, a problem with our ISP, at least internally, we can have access to our service. So layer two, can still, you can still build a network on layer two. And that network will be what? A switch network. So they only communicate via MAC addresses, MAC addresses. Now layer three is the network layer. And we have already said what the network does. So on the network layer, we have a router. Five years or 10 years ago, only a router was one of the devices that you can find in the network layer. But now we have layer three switches. So switches are supposed to be in layer two. But now we have switches that can do switching in layer two and do routing in layer three. So currently we have routers that will sit as gateway and route your network. And we have switches that can do switching in between your network and also do routing. So that is what a layer three switch. So when you go and write your CCNA and they're asking you some of the equipment and you mention a router, you don't mention layer three switches, you're going to get it wrong. So layer three is a network that combines layer, all other layer two networks. So layer three will combine layer two networks. And please, these things, they are all on Google. Please, you can Google them and you can study them. But I'm only going through for you to what, understand some of how these things work. Now, when you send an information over the internet, your packet, this is how it looks like. So you have a source IP address, 
and the destination IP address on the information. So this part, this is the information you are sending. But once it, get, it gets onto the network, it will determine the source IP address, where it is coming from, where it is going to destination. And then the rest, the other ones on the header will determine whether they are fragment, they are flags, they are versions. Please don't think about this too much. Layer four is a, is a transport layer. So the transport layer will identify, identify the endpoints, the endpoints. So where are you going to? So the endpoints, so I'm moving from point, port A to port B. So that's transport. So I'm are, are moving like a line from point A to point B, that's a line. In the, in, in the transport layer, we are doing from one port, from one port to the other port. So we use port numbers for addressing. Switch the layer two, we use MAC addresses for addressing. Layer three, we use IP addresses for addressing. Layer four, we use port numbers for addressing. So error control takes place in the transport layer. When there's a connection on the port and there's a problem, the transport layer will make sure that that problem is solved before connection can continue. If there's a problem and the connection cannot continue, then now it can break the session so that now we know that there's no transmission. So there are two forms of transmission and this you have to know because of what security issues. You have TCP and we have UDP. The TCP is very reliable and that one is connection oriented. Something has to connect. You have to see physical connection. But UDP, you don't have to see physical connection. It doesn't care. You don't have to see physical connection. In UDP, you only send you only send the, the message or the information. It doesn't matter who takes it. It doesn't check. But in TCP, when you send data, somebody has to receive it. Now let's talk about the other layers so that we can close for today. Talk about the other layers. We have the session layer. It, 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 it creates and ends sessions. So it's like a channel. So once there's a transport between two ports, the transmission will take place through a channel, through a channel or a tunnel. So this channel is what we call the session layer. Then the presentation layer is where the two devices, they encode and encrypt, they compress data. So this is where decrypting will happen. This is where encryption will happen. This is where encoding will happen. This is where decoding will happen. So that at least the message that has been sent from the network layer can get to what the application layer for us to understand. So without the presentation layer, would have been seeing some magic things, magic numbers and magic um, substances on our, 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 our computers, which we cannot understand. So the presentation layer will present whatever is happening in the network, in the session, in the layer three for us to what, appreciate on the application layer. So our browsers, our email clients, they are all what the application layer. Okay, so um, can we discuss? Let's do discussion and we close. Can somebody tell me what a layer three switch is? <laughs> My memory said it right. You said something like um, the switch um, serves as it's the layer three switch serves as a router on mm -hmm. layer three and serves as a switch on layer two. Okay, so I said that layer three switch, it does two things. It works on the layer two for as a switch, and it works on layer three as okay. a network. Okay, so it can do some small routing. And it can do switching. Uh, now, uh, wireless access point. Where does it work? You saw it in the in the in the in the, in the slide somewhere. Wireless access point. Layer two. Layer two. This layer two. Because once people are connected to the wireless, it becomes a it becomes what a wireless switch people are connected on a layer two level. So if you have a problem on layer one and you want to solve it, we have some tools we use. Um, we have the crimping tool for terminating cables. Uh, we have the punch down tools. If you have issue on the wall, you can go and punch down and then it works. 
So I'll try and get um, a picture of so that next time when we meet, I'll show all these things on the on, on, on the screen. So I'll get a picture of the of the layer one troubleshooting troubleshooting tools. Now on the layer two, on the layer, layer two, we are looking at a switch and we are looking at uh, use scanning the network so that you can solve problems when there are, there are issues on layer two. Then on, on the network layer, we are looking at the router, so the routing. So we can use pings, which we are going to learn later. Ping to, to, to check if something is working well. So when we, we meet next time, I will get some of the images and then we'll, sh we'll show you. So we'll, we'll just begin from here and then I'll show some of the images and then we'll, uh, we, we continue from there. You have any question? No, please. Oh, okay. I guess you are all network gurus. No, oh, wait, wait. <laughs> Is there a way that we can get some handouts or like maybe something to prepare? Uh, please, I can't. I can't get you. Sorry. I think that Is there a way that we can get a reference, a reference booklet or something? Uh, oh, you want our, reference, our... reference? Okay, so I'll add that to my work and I'll try and get you reference materials and then send it to you. Part of the presentation, if it is maybe we can, so that we can go to. Uh... Okay, we'll try and, and see if we can get that for you as well. But can we access the recording? Yeah, we'll put it on our, we'll put on our YouTube channel so that you can share the link and then you watch. Oh. Next week, we'll talk about IP addressing, subnetting, and we'll do um, something on the service, how to start services, how to stop services, how to check if the services are really working or they have issues. We'll look at all those things. Uh, we'll look at the codes in Ubuntu, uh, the commands in Ubuntu to do that, uh, to check uh, services uh, running and all those things. We'll try and do all those things uh, next week. And please, thank you again for joining us. Why? Today was uh, just to introduce you to our network and systems. And then we hope that next week when we come here, uh, it will be fun. So if you have any issue, you can reach me directly via, uh, via WhatsApp. Thank you for your time and have a lovely evening. Bye-bye.